Hey guys, Brandonio Productions here. Uh, now, I've been receiving a lot of messages ev after I've uh, started doing my Java tutorials, and these messages have been kind of weird, but what they're asking is, they like the way that the Java language is structured uh, with its curly braces and uh, its semicolons and just the general way that you code in Java. And uh, i got to agree with them, I do prefer that way to code. Um, and they're asking if there's a way to get that type of coding in Visual Basic .NET uh, because they want to take that style and put it with VB.NET's uh, easiness to create a Windows Forms application. And now this is kind of a rough solution, but it's a solution. Uh, what you can do is you can actually switch to C Sharp .NET, and I suppose I'll also be doing a series of tutorials on this as well. So. What you want to do in order to get to c uh is you want to go to your Visual Studio 2010 or Visual Basic 2010 Express or actually I don't know if Visual Basic Express Edition uh, supports this. Um, however, if you do have Visual Studio 2010 Professional, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to Other Languages uh, when you start a new project and then Visual, Visual C Sharp and then you want to create a new Windows Forms application. Now this will actually allow you to create a Visual Basic type application in a coding style like Java. So let's go ahead and check it out. So as you can see here you have the basic form designer just like in VB.NET and if you want to create an actual application uh, all you have to do is use the same process. So we're going to start with a basic hello world thing. So we're going to insert a button into our application we are also going to insert a text box and we're going to resize them a bit and the first thing we're going to do is actually change the text of our button by clicking on it then going to the properties menu going down to text and I'm going to change it to click here okay so now in order to get to the code where this button is clicked we need to double click on this button and as you can see here we jump right into the code that looks exactly like Java but it's not. It's C sharp. So uh, we can get into the coding right away. So this coding right here will actually take place when the button is clicked. So we can go ahead and start coding. Uh, what we want it to do is as soon as it's clicked we want to display a little message box that says hello world uh, just like the classic uh, first application for any language and this can easily be done just like in vb.net with messagebox.show and we're going to say hello world uh, now at the end of every command statement in C sharp and Java alike uh, you're going to need a semicolon to tell the language that that is indeed the end of that command statement so now if we run the application when we click on the button we should get a uh, nice message box what should we do hello world and um, now I apologize if you are a beginner and uh, you're trying to watch this tutorial however I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, text that the user has typed in this text box oops, this text box and we're actually going to turn it into a string and save it um, so in order to do this uh, first we need to understand what a string is and a string is actually a uh, just a sequence of characters so in this case a sequence of numbers or letters or symbols now in order to declare that we want a new string you have to type in the variable type so we're going to create a new variable with the type of string and then we want to type in the new name for the variable so this is just going to be called text and then we say equals and this is actually what we want the te what to be in the text variable uh, so what we want inside the text variable is the text of this text box. Now if we go back to our form and click on the actual text box, we can go to the properties and see that it is called text box 1. So we can go ahead and um, say that we want the text from text box 1. And then we go into the items sub properties by pressing by typing in the period. And then we want the text inside of this text box. And then since this is a command statement, we want to end it with a semicolon. So now we have whatever the user typed into the text box saved. So now we are going to um, display this text back to the user. 
we can do this with another message box. So we're just going to say message box dot show, and where we type in the text, we're just going to want to type in the variable text. This is a command statement again, so we end it with a semicolon. So now if we click, uh, and we're actually going to delete this first line so we don't have double message boxes. Now when we uh, click and type something in the message box, and click, uh, we get the message box displayed with what we typed in. Now we can actually interact with our users in this way by using if statements. So we can, for example, in real life, uh, if you are walking forward, then you are moving. That would be considered an if statement. So if you are doing something, then do something else. So what we're going to say is if the text is something, then we want the application to actually do something. So we're going to say if, which is just like in English. Now in order to declare what this what we want to test, we need to open parentheses. And so what we want to test to see is if the text the variable text that we set up here is actually equal to something. So if text access the submenu equals so if the text is equal to and then we use quotations to actually type in the text we want to see if it's equal to. Um, which is standard practice in any programming language. Whenever you actually want to type in a string, you want to type in it in quotation marks. So if the text equals, let's just say, Brandon, which is my name, with a capital B, um, and then you want to close off all the parentheses. Okay, and now is where it gets a little complicated. As you can see here, each there's curly brackets here. And the whole structure of every C and Java based language, or C based language rather, is to use curly brackets to open and close fields. So for example, here in the namespace Windows Forms Application 1 field, we have everything that belongs to our project, Windows Forms Application 1. So we open up the field here, so anything inside this curly bracket belongs to um, our actual project. And then we close the field with this closed curly bracket, and uh, that denotes that anything above the that bracket is uh, part of the actual project. So anything in between these two brackets is part of the thing we declare up here. So same thing with this. Uh, now we're saying form one. So anything inside of here is actually part of form one. And then this method uh, is actually part of form one and this initialize component code that call is being called from form 1 every time there's a new form 1 set up we can we'll go this over this in later tutorials when we start talking about object oriented programming and here we have private void button 1 click now this is also inside this form uh, area and that opens and it closes down here so it's saying all everything in between these two curly braces will occur when button 1 is clicked. So, what we need to do is we actually need to set up a new pair of curly braces in order to declare what is going to happen if text equals Brandon. And what happens is going to be in between these curly braces. So, if the text equals Brandon, then we are going to actually uh, send out another message box to the user, and it's going to display the message hello Brandon and this is once again a command code so we use a semicolon and notice that we also typed in a string here so we used quotation marks so let's go ahead and test out our application so we press the run button and uh, we're actually going to type in our form a name like Trevor and if we click here it just says Trevor because if you go through the code, it says button one clicked, so we save the text that we typed in, and then we're displaying it with a message box. And then it says, if the text equals Brandon, do this stuff. However, the text does not equal Brandon, so sh we should not just see a message box with hello Brandon, which we don't. However, if we do type Brandon and click, then we get a message box with this display of Brandon, so we're saving the text again, which is Brandon, and then we're showing the text, which is Brandon, and then if we press OK, the next one pops up saying, Hello, Brandon, because the text does indeed equal Brandon. That's a lot of Brandons. <laughs> OK, so now that we've got if statements done, 
Uh, we can also pair this with else statements. Else, sorry for sounding like I put a T in there. But else statements are pretty much the opposite. So if the text equals Brandon, then we do this. However, if the text does not equal Brandon, we need to do something completely different. Okay, so what we need to do is just right under this if the text equals Brandon part, we're going to open a new statement called the else statement. And all we're going to do is type else. And um, then we need to open up a new set of, uh, a new area that will only occur if the text does not equal Brandon. So when the text does not equal Brandon, we're just going to display a message box that says, you are not Brandon. And once again, we end the line with a semicolon because it's a command code, and we put the string in quotations. This message box show is the standard code to pop up with the little dialog box. And keep in mind, this is all in the body for else. So we're going to go ahead and run the project to test it out one more time. And if we type in this time a different name like Yori, and click here. So it displays Yori again from our first set of code. And if we press OK, it says, you are not Brandon. Because it goes through this code and it says, is the text the user typed in equal to Brandon? Uh, it says, no, it's not. So we're going to move down here, else, and show the message box, you are not Brandon. So that's the basic tutorial of C Sharp. And um, since people have been asking, if is there a way to code vb.net? in the Java style? Yes, there is. C -sharp .net. Now, I have no idea if this is available for Visual Basic 2010 Express Edition. Uh, I would assume not. However, that's just my speculation. Uh, so if it is or if it isn't, please post in the comments. Uh, and if it isn't, then I will post a video on how to get Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Professional for free. Uh, yes. Okay, so thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you at least learned a little bit. If you did not, I apologize for wasting my time. Wait, <laughs> I apologize for wasting your time. Yes. Uh, so please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to this video. Subscribe to this video. Now, if we think about that, subscribing to a video. Now, that never really occurs. Uh, so why don't you just subscribe to my channel instead, and uh, we'll talk later. So thanks for watching again, and have a great day, night, evening, morning. Peace.